Have you ever felt like you're just wasting your time studying Japanese? Because trust me, as somebody who's lived here for over two years, I've been there. Because despite spending up to six hours a day studying Japanese, I can't help but feel like it's been a massive waste of time. And to be honest, I've come to realize that it kind of was. You see, there are three massive mistakes that almost everybody makes when they're starting to learn Japanese. Chances are, if you're learning Japanese, you're making all of them right now. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to save countless hours learning Japanese. And before you know it, you'll have a clear path to fluency. The first mistake that people make is so obvious and easy to avoid, yet everybody I know somehow ends up falling for it. Personally, I'm not any better because I've made this mistake countless times, and I've lost over a month of my time for it. But because we've advanced so much since then, it's now considered a waste of time. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm talking about writing. You know, it seems like the right thing to do. You know, it makes sense that you should learn how to write because how else are you going to do your textbook homework or pass your Japanese class exam? And the thing is, learning how to write can take a long time. I could argue it's the hardest part of learning Japanese, but the thing is, it's completely optional. In fact, if you're dead set on learning how to write, do it after you know how to read and listen because you'll be so much more familiar with the characters. But if you decide to take my advice and not learn how to write, you'll save months worth of time. But don't come complain to me when you spent like over a year's worth of effort on something that's like a party trick. The only thing learning how to write for is getting familiar with kanji, but there's like a million other ways to do that. Like, I don't know, actually immersing. Immersion is arguably the most important part of learning Japanese. And it's often the most overlooked too. How you immerse yourself will determine how quickly you're gonna learn this language. And it'll also make sure that you're learning the correct things. But the issue is the vast majority of people pick the incorrect things to immerse themselves with. They either go for an anime that is way too complicated for them to understand, or they just completely misunderstand the idea of immersion. But let me explain how to properly immerse yourself in Japanese because somehow every everybody gets it wrong. But before that, I need to distinguish the two types of immersion that there are. One type of immersion is language-based immersion. And language-based immersion basically means replacing all of the English that you encounter with Japanese. You take this as far as you can handle while still understanding everything, and then you just slowly let Japanese take over your entire life. You'll be on Japanese YouTube instead of real YouTube. And you'll be watching anime sports instead of real sports. It seems simple, but it actually leaves a lot of room for mistakes. One of these mistakes, as mentioned earlier, is picking things that you want to consume in Japanese, but it's too complicated for you to understand. And I've made this mistake a lot because I'm especially picky with the anime that I like to watch. I just end up watching complicated shows like ReZero and I just have no idea what's going on. This is an issue that really stumped me from learning Japanese for the longest time because I wasn't able to enjoy the anime that I was able to understand. Luckily, I found a solution to this problem that I'll actually mention later on in this video during the third and biggest mistake. So if you want to solve this problem yourself, then make sure you watch to the end. But for now, I'd like to talk about the second type of immersion, which is cultural immersion. And most people really don't see how important this is. I mean, the truth is most people are just learning Japanese because the English subtitles get in the way their favorite waifu. But hey, it is what it is. You don't have to like start training for karate or anything, but you should at least be like interested in the only country that speaks this language. Because Japanese culture is so strongly embedded in the language, you can't really understand the Japanese language without understanding the culture. I mean, the crazy thing is the language was created based off a culture that you can still see today very clearly. But sadly, not everybody can just pack a bag and fly to Japan. So most people can't directly experience culture with ease. Food especially is one of the most integral parts of the culture, but it seems like nowhere else in the world can you experience the same flavors that you can in Japan. Before I moved here, I tried to immerse myself with like cup ramen and takeout sushi, but it's just so heavily butchered that it's not even like Japanese food anymore. Man, all this talk about immersing myself in food really brings me back. Back to when I took just one bite of the snack from Sakuriko, and I felt like I was in a 700-year-old Japanese house chilling with my geisha. And if you're wondering how you can experience this exact same feeling without having to book a flight to Japan, well, you had to check out Sakuriko, one of the sponsors of today's video. This box can be shipped right to your door straight from Japan. And as you can see, it is packed with authentic snacks, literally made in Kyoto by a bunch of local snack makers. I mean, if that's not immersion, then I don't know what is. And I can't wait to start trying them right from the... Wait, who's there? Can't you see I'm trying to immerse myself in Japanese culture right now from the comfort of my- Oh, oh this came just in time. Now it's time for the other sponsor of today's video, Tokyo Tree. Now something that you need to know about me is I love Halloween candy. Most of us are too old to go trick-or-treating, but luckily this here box full of Japanese Halloween candy can be shipped right to your door no matter where you are. Alright, we got Kit Kat, Apple Pie, we're right here. Cheers. Oh my god. I'm not even acting right now, like eat this right now. Oh, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, actually really good. good. I actually like it better than normal cake, I'm not gonna lie. No, they're making this easy for us. All right, bro, here's your tea. Huh? Drink up. 
Oh yeah, it's good. I actually really like it. So in every box, there's like this little book play. So let's go see what's inside. Have you seen any of these? Promise Neverland is all right. Death Parade is very, very good. It's a classic. And this is what Kyoto looks like in the fall. It's absolutely beautiful. Dude, the snacks actually come like straight from Kyoto. And this is like a lot of information about what's going on there. All right, guys, as you can see, I just ate a bunch of the snacks. They're actually like they're so good. You have to get these. It's limited editions only through October. But when you do, make sure you use the discount code become or click the first link in the description. You'll get $5 off your first box. I don't want to leave the house. I just want these delivered. So please continue sponsoring me, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. I love your boxes. You guys need to try it. This might be one of the most controversial takes in the entire Japanese learning community, especially among those who spend more time learning how to learn Japanese than actually learning it. And I know this is going to upset people, but I'm going to say it anyway. Early output is terrible. <laughs> And I know some of you might be thinking, isn't speaking a language the whole point of learning it? But let me explain why I think this, because the reasons are actually pretty crazy and it caused me to stop speaking Japanese altogether. But before I talk about that further, there actually is one caveat to early output where it is okay to start speaking early on. I originally tried to cover both issues in one mistake, but I figured it'd be better if I included it as a second bonus mistake. But before we get to that, I need to tell you why early output for most people is the worst possible thing you can do as an early Japanese learner. So what is early output exactly? As the name implies, early output is when you start speaking the language before you built a solid foundation, usually as a beginner. And you know, I get why you might be eager to start practicing right away. You know, maybe it's like that one Japanese girl in the back of your class you want to impress. But for most people, this will just lead them down a bad path. The thing is, when you focus on speaking early on, you run the risk of forming really bad habits that become difficult to break later on. Instead of focusing on how to communicate naturally, you might end up with a bad vocabulary that doesn't make sense or an improper pronunciation that you become stuck with later on. So here's where the big debate comes in. A lot of people that learn languages emphasize the importance of one key element. Comprehensible input. The idea here is that language is best acquired when you expose yourself to content that is just a little bit above your current level. You don't need to understand every word, but through context, tone, and repetition, you can begin to fill in the gaps. The more you expose yourself to content that lies in the sweet spot where you can understand just enough to follow along, the more you can learn the language naturally. Remember earlier in the video when I was talking about language-based immersion and I said I would provide a guide for how to find the correct content to watch? The reason I say that for now is because it falls in line perfectly with comprehensible input. So for those who choose to immerse themselves in anime, which is probably like all of you, I have two websites that are really helpful. These two websites are called jpdb.io and learnjapaneseanime.com. They go through every anime and rate from 1 to 10 how difficult it is. So you can pick the one that's just right for you. So as long as you start with a low level and then you move up once that level starts to feel like unchallenging, I guarantee you'll have a clear path to fluency. This is personally how I've been using comprehensible input to learn Japanese quicker. And I gotta say, for me, it's been giving me really good results. So funny enough, by developing input instead of output, you're essentially developing your skills at the same rate as you would if you did prioritize output but at the same time you're learning like twice as fast by doing so. And a lot of people will disagree with the idea that you should fundamentally just stop speaking Japanese altogether but honestly it's mainly due to personal experience that I stopped speaking Japanese. Because I live in Japan, I've had a lot of situations where I had to speak early on whether I like it or not. I eventually started talking to Japanese people and I had to make do with the little Japanese that I knew. I was able to convey what I was thinking, but only to a very general extent. So now I'm kind of just stuck with these habits of sounding really stupid because all the Japanese that I learned came from a bunch of situations where I was desperate. So now I'm just stuck with the cringy American accent and I've misused Subite and Zenbu more times than I can count. And these bad speaking habits are almost impossible to break once they become ingrained. So if you're like me, you're just gonna end up being insecure about your accent for like the rest of your life. I mean, luckily all my Japanese friends just wanna speak English with me anyway, so I'm not really missing out. But recently I've taken this really far. Whenever I have to deal with like customer service or something, I just pretend I don't speak Japanese and I force them to use Google Translate. So honestly, it feels like in the process of trying to fix my mistakes, I just end up making more and I stop speaking Japanese altogether. And I can't use the Japanese that I spent years learning. And this whole idea falls perfectly in line with a bonus mistake that I mentioned earlier. Even though I just gave you a million reasons not to speak Japanese, it's not to say that you shouldn't speak Japanese at all until you're absolutely perfect. There will come a time where speaking becomes a vital part of your learning process, and that time may come before you're absolutely perfect and fluent. Basically, the bottom line of this argument is that if you have no urgent reason to speak, then there's no reason to. Unless you have someone constantly correcting you and making sure that you don't develop bad habits, like a tutor in iTalk or something, then speaking will ultimately harm you in the long run. But once you know for sure that speaking isn't just gonna leave you with bad habits, then honestly go for it. But I get that speaking is a necessary motivation for a lot of people to keep studying, so it's really hard to say that you should just never speak 
again. All I'm saying overall is that if you delay output and focus on input, you'll progress way faster in the long run. And once you've built up a strong foundation for the language, speaking and writing will come way more naturally to you. I mean, think about it. This is literally how you learn your first language as a baby. You stayed silent, you just absorbed everything that you're hearing like a sponge, and then you use that to speak whenever you're better with a better foundation, if that makes sense. But if you're wondering how people develop accents in languages, well, the answer is early output. So if you want to be able to speak Japanese without an accent, you just have to do what you did as a baby all over again. And for those of you who have no idea what this input-output stuff means, in summary, don't be the yapper, be the mewer. So those are the three biggest mistakes that happen with language learners. I fell victim to a lot of these mistakes myself and I'm currently trying to recover. And that's why I don't like speaking Japanese in videos. I mean, I can barely stand hearing myself in English to begin with. But either way, I really hope these tips helped you. I know these tips are like the exact opposite of what like every language class will tell you, but these tips have been passed down by the best white boys that know Japanese. So don't just take my word for it. Anyway, press subscribe if you're left big toe, uh, type a comment using only your elbows, and you can join the Discord. There's a secret Discord if you join the Patreon. And most importantly, Thanks so much to Tokyo Tree and Sakuriko for being our first ever sponsors. I mean, real talk, these snacks are just like really good. Like, as you can see, I've pretty much eaten everything in here. Yeah, these are all empty wrappers and that happened over the span of like three days. Thank you for watching.